All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Kizzy Parks, who is in South Florida. How are you doing, Kizzy? Doing well. How are you? Excellent. And uh, Kizzy is the president of KPC. And what we're going to talk about today is it's an interesting subject, an overlooked market and one that sometimes people avoid for for many reasons. And there's probably some good reasons. There's probably some mythology behind it, too, um, what we'll explore today. And that is federal government contracting. Uh, so for the un- so just starting, uh, Kizzy, for the uninitiated, uh, just explain federal government contracting. So basically, the federal government spends over five hundred billion dollars a year, and they buy every. <laughs> I was going to say a day. Every these year, <laughs> <laughs> and and they buy everything. So. Mm-hmm. Anything that you sell, pancake mix, marketing services, you know, they provide um, electric, they buy electronics, they buy uniforms, they buy everything. So many people overlook it. I feel like they focus either on reselling on Amazon or maybe their brick and mortar or whatever it is that they've just kind of become accustomed to. Uh, and a lot of the times I think, uh, I mean, I think that was, that's good information to be because I think sometimes when people think government contracting, they're thinking defense contract, they're thinking all big, big, big stuff, but you're correct. I mean, the, the, the government contracts for, for everything. And I think one of the things that I think makes people reluctant to, to do it is that, uh, is because it seems like a complex process to get approved to, to be a government contractor. Yeah, I mean, it's like with many things in life. Like if it were easy, everybody would do it. Like if being an entrepreneur was easy, everybody would be one. You know, if being an executive was easy, everyone would be an executive. If social media was easy, everybody would have millions of followers. So it's it's no different with government contracting. It isn't anything, you know, where it's impossible or it's going to put you in a predicament. There are things that you need to do, but it's no different than registering your business. And there's different workarounds too. Yeah, so so talk us through a little bit of the process so people understand that maybe it gets a little bit demystified for them. If you were going, if you're going to go and start trying to sell to the federal government, what are some of the steps that you need to go through? Yeah, I mean, number one, the most important step is making sure that you have something or are interested in something to offer to the federal government. And then there's a one like part B and that is that you can pay your bills. So if you're set up as an entrepreneur and you're struggling to pay your bills then I would not go into government contracting. I would focus on making sure that you're able to sustain your lifestyle, sustain that. And then when you're ready to move into government contracting. So with government contracting, it's all about the mentality the approach that you want to take. So as I stated, there are tons of products and services that they sell. So there's a list of them on Sam, like uncle Sam.gov, Sam.gov. You don't have to log in. You just literally go on there and you can search to see the different types of opportunities that are there. So that's number one. The second thing is, you know, realizing that you can kind of take two approaches, one, an approach of following what it is that you're doing now, or the second approach is more entrepreneurial, meaning that, as I said, the government buys everything. So if you want to flip hotel rooms, you can do it. If you want to resell electronics, you can do that, even if your main gig is accounting. So if you're the type listening, watching, who's super entrepreneurial, and you're like, oh yeah, I would love to do something like that, then the government space is perfect because there's so many different opportunities for you to sell to the federal government. And I would say the third thing is you just have to have a little bit of patience. The government is one of the greatest clients to have because they pay you. If they pay you after 60 days, you will be paid interest. And they're really, I personally, I find them to be very, very easy to work with. Yeah, that's good. That's that's good to know because, uh, as I said, I mean, one of the 
one of the maybe mythologies out there is that it's it's a difficult process and they're difficult to work with. Um, but as you say, I mean, the upside of it is, yes, you will get paid, which is something that, uh, let's face it, I mean, in the if you're selling to, to private companies, you hopefully will get paid, but it's not always the case. So there's so that's a, that's a good argument. Um, one of the other things I think that people sometimes think is, oh well, they'll just they they drive the price down. Yeah, you know, I would say that's across the board. I mean, think about Amazon. Isn't that one of the complaints? Mm -hmm. But yet, how many entrepreneurs are successful on Amazon or other platforms? And so I think it's it's a misconception. I think it's something where in business, regardless of the industry, the powers that be want to maybe drive the price down. When it comes to government contracting, my emphasis is on what's profitable. Yeah, there are different products and services, no different than what we've experienced at cons as consumers where the price may be lower just because of the nature of it. It's kind of like electronics, like a a flat screen television used to cost thousands of dollars. Now you can get them for hundreds or free in a raffle, right? And so no different than with government contracting. There's certain services where legally they, they pay a certain amount or their the prices may be lower. But then there are others where that's not the case whatsoever. So it, it again, it really boils down to understanding how to really maximize profit and which routes to take to be really profitable, no different than outside of the federal government too. Yeah, no, that's, that's a great point. And, and I think it's a great one to also continue to reiterate the fact, yeah, that sure, there's, there'd be price competition there, but there's price competition everywhere today. Because I think sometimes people, again, when people think of government contracting, they think of, you know, things like GSA schedules and things like that, you know, that, but that doesn't apply to everything, right? No, no, not at all. And especially when you're first starting out, I advise against rushing to get on a GSA schedule. That's something to pursue down the road. There are many that are very successful in the government space and they don't have a GSA schedule or they're a subcontractor. They may provide training services for different entities or maybe they're um, a contractor full-time connected to a contract and they're 1099. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it seems like I mean, first of all, actually, it probably good for the audience. Uh, it's my bad, but you should uh, just just describe what GSA schedule is, just in case people don't understand it. Yeah. So, excuse me. Basically, because for the most part, the federal government utilizes taxpayer dollars. They want to make sure that they're fiscally responsible and um, leveraging those funds adequately, right? So GSA has these different schedules where you can apply for them, where you offer the federal government like a discounted rate. You may offer another discount like 2% off the total or 2% off of $100,000. And these rates are pre-negotiated. So then agencies who leverage that schedule, if you say, I'm going to provide you marketing services at $65 an hour, those are your rates across the board. And it makes it much easier for them to work with you because they can directly go to you through the GSA schedule, which is very powerful because otherwise it's challenging. And especially in America, we love easy, regardless if you're ordering food, if you're trying to make purchases as a government employee, we all like easy. And so the GSA schedule makes it easy. And there's a ton of different types of schedules to, um, to apply for. And they're largely based on what you offer. Yeah, no, that's thank you. That's a great explanation there, because I think that's what some, again, as I said, I think sometimes it puts people off because they think, oh, I don't know how to do this and everything. But as you said, um, you don't even have to go there necessarily, and certainly not when you're starting out. The other part is, uh, I think, is uh, that when we think of contracting with the federal government, again, 
people think of it as this huge monolithic beast out there rather than a an entity that's made up of so many different parts that you can engage at at a fairly um, simple level if you like almost local level yeah they do they they do that and but the thing is it there's so much variance where there's contracts all over the country. There's contracts locally. You don't, I don't, I mean, I live here in South Florida and we don't have any work here per se. So it's really, you make the most out of it because again, the federal government touches all across the world, not just in America, continental US, like literally all across the world. Like I was looking at an opportunity earlier today that's in Guam, for instance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, that's and of course, obviously, today with a lot of uh, products and services that you can deliver virtually, I mean, it means that no longer is it no longer are you restricted by location for a lot of the things that you can deliver. That's correct. You you're not restricted, and then uh, there's definitely an uptick in virtual services or an agency being more open to virtual. It always varies. It it varies on the need of that agency and the requirements of the positions or positions. Um, yeah, and and how do you make yourself so? As you as you mentioned earlier, you know, Americans love everything to be easy, and that's something because I'm actually originally from Ireland. I've been here like nearly twenty five years, but that's what I always tell people if they ask me. Uh, about America, I would say this country is has been set up to make things easy. It's a very easy place to live and do business, etc. What is the what is the government, you know, federal? What do they look for in vendors and suppliers? How how can you present yourself in in a in the best way possible to make it easy for them to do business with you? Well, number one is it's about them. Like so many vendors make the mistake of like, we're so great. We want all these awards. Here's who's our president. They don't care. (laughs) They want to know what have you done for clients? Even if it's not government, like what have you done for people? What did you do? How did you do it? What were the end results? That's what they're interested in. They're also interested in making sure that, you know, you're on the road to trust that they're not going to end up in their boss's office because they hired you and you didn't do what they needed, or you're not going to end up on the front page of a newspaper because of something that you did. So that's very, very important. The other thing that they're looking for is ease of working with you. They really are. Um, That's where the GSA schedule or you partnering with somebody who has a schedule or Maybe you bid on work where it's on Unison. That's another website that you can go to. They're looking for easy and they're also, they'll say that they're looking for you to be fair with them. You know, that they know that they're asking a lot, but they don't want you to break the bank. So if you come in too high, like, of course, if it's some cybersecurity top secret person, that makes sense. But if you're bidding on like Dell computers, I mean, you have to be really realistic. So they're looking for that. And then finally, they really do want to work with companies that make their lives easier, definitely make their lives easier, hands down, because there's so many government contractors out there that they they don't have to continue working with you. It, no different than in private sector. They can cancel your contract. They can um, decide not to exercise an option year. Like So it's really important that you are there for them and you work according to how they move. That's also really important because I think people assume government that it's all the same and it's not. So you have to be flexible in order to work really well with them. Yeah, no, it's a great, it's a great point. Uh, and I think, uh, I think so. I think part of it uh, is that understanding, as you said, understanding how the different uh, groups or departments or whatever, how they work, uh, and then adapting yourself to make it easy for them to work with you by understanding how they work. If that makes sense. But uh, and I think doing that kind of level of homework is, is obviously very beneficial or working mm-hmm. with people like yourselves to understand it. 
It definitely is. It definitely is. Cause there's so many cool, I think it's so cool. There's so many cool opportunities and it just, there's just something so magical about working with the federal government. I, I love it so much. I love what we do. It varies so much. I love finding new opportunities. Like, I mean, it just blows my mind as far as like, like I saw human cadaver training. I mean, not that I'm bidding on that, but hey, maybe somebody listening, that's their thing. I don't know. You know, they also buy, you know, kosher potato chips, you know, who knew? So uh, they buy kosher coffee. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. And I think that's what makes it so special. Yeah. And like I said, I think I think a lot of people are unaware of it. I'm just wondering how how do you get trained to be a human cadaver? That's interesting. But um, well, no, they anyway. use real human cadavers. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you, but you know, it's interesting how somebody becomes trained and how to work with them. But yeah, I mean, it's just, it's fascinating. And they buy technology and they buy like human resources training and admin services. And so it's really cool. So it provides variety if one is seeking that, or, you know, if all you want to offer is you want to staff firefighters, you can staff firefighters. The federal government procures firefighting services um, through FEMA. Yeah. And, and, and as you said, I mean, I think the, the interesting thing here is, okay, so you've got, you've got a customer in the federal government who's going to be there for the long term. They're not going anywhere. And I guess if you can de- develop a good relationship with them, if you can show that you're easy to work with, that you understand how they work, you can, you can build your whole business around it or certainly a large part of your business and, and know that they're going to be there. So it's not like you're putting all your eggs in one basket in, in many ways, it's, you know, because sometimes in the private sector, you, ha- you have to be very careful because you don't know how those companies, maybe they're going to get bought, maybe they're going to go out of business, maybe they're going to merge, you know, there's many things that can happen. There is at least some semblance of stability with the federal government. Yeah, that's so true. I mean, it, it is. And, you know, things vary based on administration, but it's it's really about, I would say, client relations and staying ahead of things. Like if you notice that someone's agenda is energy, OK, be aware of that. If you notice somebody's agenda has to deal with defense, OK, then be aware of that. If you just, you just have to just be aware. It doesn't mean that you need to now jump into a different field, but you have to think about, okay, maybe I look into different kinds of clients or, you know, just things to keep in mind. So we're very, very mindful of what's going on politically. Just again, so we're aware as well as being aware of who's over the different agencies Um, We like to take note. And then lastly, this is important, is most of the agencies will list like their strategy or their mission. And it's important to be aware of that, because if you look through it and there's nothing in there that interests you or fits what you're doing, then you should probably look into a different agency. Yeah, no, that's a great point as well. And I think uh, and obviously one of the benefits that you have. Uh, with the federal government over private companies or even public companies in many ways is that some of the things that you can find out about the federal government it's hard to find out. it's extremely hard to find out about private companies and it can it can be hard uh, to find out about public companies too but the fact is there's a certain level of transparency that they have to have anyway yeah there's a lot of transparency with federal government Uh, a lot of transparency with the opportunities. And again, it doesn't mean every opportunity is on SAM.gov or on Unison, but it's a great place to start. If you go on SAM.gov right now, and maybe there's an opportunity on there and you're like, okay, I can bid on it. You literally can bid on it. I mean, (laughs) you know, it's, it's what's really, I think what's very fascinating. And again, you can pivot. Like they're like, if, if we, if I, if we see something on Unison, Unison, they, they pride themselves on, on selling the unusual (laughs) to the government. And so literally they'll have things on there, like books for bureaus of prison, technology, horse training, food. So if you see somebody's looking for a hundred Oculus and you have the money to pay for a hundred Oculus and you're cool with flipping those 
by all means, we've done that before. We've resold Oculus. We've been on Oculus. It could be. So I think that's what's also fascinating, too, is you don't have to be this like computer company. And that's and that's another misconception because you think of IBM, Lockheed Martin. They they provide services too. They have admin. You just don't hear about it because that's not sexy. Yeah, yeah, no, but exactly. Like, Lockheed Martin, we provide admin. That's they want to be known for defense equipment, not for staffing. But I assure you, all of these big government contractors provide staffing and provide services to the federal government that you would never dream that they do. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point and a great thing for people to understand as well, because I think that's fascinating about the larger companies providing a, a range of services. Uh, and uh, and then the other thing you mentioned there, I just wanted to come back to quickly before we finish, is that notion of being able to pivot, because let's face it, in the last year or so, uh, given the situation with the pandemic, is a lot of businesses have had to have had to pivot or look for adjacent things to do or supplemental things to do to keep their business going. And clearly, here is an opportunity where you have there's a lot of different things going on. So it's almost set up for you to be able to pivot if you need to. It definitely is. It definitely is. I remember several years ago, it was, it was right around 2013, 2012. And I knew that we needed to pivot. We had focused a lot of time and energy around diversity and inclusion and training. And I was like, that's been amazing. And I love it. But I was like, there's more in federal contracting than that. <laughs> and I noticed that there would, there were people that would receive sizable contracts and then they would fizzle and the next hot thing. And you can, you can use that same example for many industries where everybody wants the hot latest and greatest. And so at, in 2013, we pivoted and it's been, so, it's helped us out so much where we have exercise physiologists, we have religious positions, we inspect vape shops, we have trainers, we have simulation developers, we still provide diversity services. But because of our personal diversity, it opens us up to more opportunities. So people don't think like, why are you bidding on this? They're kind of like, oh, that of course that makes sense. You guys do so many different things because at the heart of what we do, it still involves staffing. It still involves making lives easier. It still is in areas that I'm passionate about. And so that's what's so cool about government contracting is you literally can pivot. I have a friend who's really big on flipping hotel rooms. I didn't even know about that until he told me about it. And you find hotels, you mark them up and you flip them to the government. And he does that often. He has lodging for um, agencies. He provides sign language interpreters and None of this is his background. And I find it so awesome because at the core, he's an entrepreneur. And that's what's so great about the federal government. Yeah. And, and what a great place to, to finish on, uh, Kizzy, because I think you just you just said something there that I think a lot of people probably haven't thought about because they think about government and, and federal and all of that they think about it almost as the opposite of entrepreneurialism right you know that's all very well that's all government and rigid and all that but exactly what you're talking about as being a government contractor there are so many opportunities to be entrepreneurial and as you said I mean it's right there in front of you it's not like you have to come up with a lot of these ideas yourselves I mean you can see what the need is and then figure out how to to uh, how to meet that need but I think that's the really key thing is is the fact that you can be entrepreneurial working with the federal government, even though to a lot of people that would seem like a contrarian position almost. Yeah, I know it definitely does, but it, it really is. And it's it truly is no different than how the large government contractors operate. I mean, it's it's literally being entrepreneurial in the sense of checking out the different opportunities. When you get an opportunity, see if there's other ways that you can be of help. You know, if you notice that that you're providing janitorial services, but maybe they've been complaining about their training, well, maybe you can get into training. Who knows? You know, you partner with someone. And so that's what's really cool about the federal government. That's why so many companies will have a variety of contracts because it's like Amazon. We trust Amazon with our detergent and our food and our pet supplies and maybe your clothes. 
And it's no different than the federal government. If you provide my janitorial services and you do an awesome job, then maybe you can provide some technology for me. I don't know. Maybe you can provide chairs. Maybe you can help me with painting the walls. And so that's what's really, really cool because it really boils down to the trust and the dependability, no different than the favorite place that you like to shop. And that's what's awesome about the government. Yeah, listen, thank you so much. This is fantastic and such great information. And I really do think that this will help a lot of people who have never thought about it in this particular way. Uh, all of Dr. Kizzy's information uh, is going to be below this video. But before we go, uh, Kizzy, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yeah, so I own government contracting companies, but I really want to speak to everyone listening about GovCon winners, GovCon winners with an S is in Sierra.com, where I help service-based companies learn how to find, bid, and win federal government contracts. We have been awarded, my three companies, over $50 million in government contracts. I show you what I do, what we practice. We have contracts. We've been awarded over $50 million through um, our boot camp, as well as some other new offerings that are coming up. So the website is new and live and we're still t tinkering with it and I'm working with clients right now. So if it's something that's of interest, please um, connect there or connect with me on LinkedIn, Kizzy Parks, you can find me there too. Listen, thank you so much, Kizzy. This is absolutely fascinating and I think it'll help a lot of people and it just shows you there's, opportun there's always opportunities out there if you know where to look and there's always people like yourselves there to help you if you uh, to help you get started and to point you in the right direction so if this is something that interests you i would highly recommend you, you check it out uh, again my name is john golden thank you dr kizzy parks and i will see you all for another interview really soon thank you